Hello, I'm Ms. Pulliam. Welcome to Library Special with Ms. Pulliam. That's me. I'm really excited to be here. And we are going to start, first of all, this is for our third to fifth graders. And I'm so excited that everybody is enjoying this book. Oh my goodness. It's such a great book by Andrew Clements. I need to, once I need to start thinking about what we'll read next afterwards. But to find a book that everybody enjoys so much, that's that's definitely a treat. We're going to read a couple chapters today. And then we're going to go over a cute little penguin book that I has a, I just read to the younger kids, um, K2. But it, it has such a good meaning behind it. And, you know, I like that. Okay, so I believe we're on chapter four. Is that correct? Three. I don't know. Let's find out. Come on, Miss William. What are you doing? Uh, no. We, so we did one, two, three. Then we did four, five, six. So we're doing seven, eight, and nine. My goodness. All right. Didn't realize we went so far with this. Oh, there's ten. Seven. Chapter seven is called Comfort. Buckle up back there, Alex snapped. Are you going to say that every time I get into this car... I know how to use a, a seatbelt. His mom turned and faced him. Then in a sharp, high-pitched voice, she said, I don't know who you are or where you came from, but from now on, you do as I tell you, okay? That was one of mom's favorite Star Wars quotes, and she was using her Princess Leia voice. It was totally annoying, but also funny. His mom could find a Star Wars quote that would fit almost any situation. But whenever she became commander of the minivan, something happened and the quotes came tumbling out. His mom craned her neck until she could see Luke and Alec in the rearview mirror. She said, I want to hear all about your first day at school, but I know your dad will want to hear everything too. So let's wait till dinner, okay? Fine with me, Alec said. Luke already had his iPad lit up. Me too. Alec took out a book, but it wasn't the one he'd he'd had in the gym. It was Charlotte's Web. He had first read he had first read it during second grade, and it was a book he kept going back to, like Kidnapped and The Swiss Family Robinson and The Chronicles of Narnia, The Hobbit, and about 20 others. So these are classic books that he keeps going back to that he really likes. Some people had comfort food, but Alec had comfort books. Stories so familiar that they made reading feel like coasting downhill on a bike or water skiing on a smooth lake. And Charlotte's Web was one of his all-time favorite, all-time favorites. Except these days, this wasn't a book he would read in public. A story about a farm girl who talks with a pig and a spider and a bunch of barn animals. Not what most sixth grade guys were into. But it worked for Alec. And in less than two minutes, Kent and all of his insults had faded away. Luke suddenly nudged Alec. Something had happened way too often. Alec hated interruptions, and he especially hated being jabbed in the ribs. Check out this scene I animated at EDP today. Luke abbreviated everything. And EDP was short for Extended Day Program. He shoved his iPad under Alex's nose. On the screen, a slimy green and yellow monster with bulging red eyes was chasing a tiny white kitten around and around until it finally got the fluffy little guy trapped in the lower left corner. Just as the beast opened its drooling jaws, the kitten's mouth opened up even wider, and with razor-sharp teeth, longer than its body, it sliced the monster into seven chunks with one giant chomp and the lumps lay there, lay there on the ground. Then the kitty... Okay, I guess I could read all the words. I'm just going, ew. Okay. The lumps lay there, oozing and quivering on the ground. Then the kitty closed his mouth and made a tiny meowing sound, and the words, play nice, popped onto the screen. Alec laughed. That's awesome! Luke seemed to seemed to reply, but he was actually talking to himself. Animation's too blocky, and the sound needs tweaking, and I have to spike the ending. More slime. 
Luke turned away, flipped to a different app, and began tapping. Alec had figured out a long time ago that his little brother was from a different galaxy. Actually, the same galaxy his mom and dad came from. They lived in the computer universe. All three of them, and Alec didn't. They were screen people, and he was a paper person. A woman in a white sports car sped past their minivan honking her horn. Using her Yoda voice, his mom said, you must unlearn what you have learned. Another Star Wars quote. One Friday night during third grade, Alec had watched the original Star Wars movie with his dad and mom. About halfway through, he noticed their lips moving. Both of them knew the whole movie by heart. Every single word. His parents owned a huge Star Wars collection. They had all the small figures, at least two of each, X-Wing fighters in all different sizes, two each of all the Star Wars Lego sets, and one, one for playing and one unopened. Six different lightsabers, seven or eight board games, the huge Darth Death Star uh, space station, an Imperial Starship, the Millennium Falcon, the stuff went on and on. Impressive, yes. Plus a little crazy. They even had a, a restored Star Wars arcade game from the 1980s wedged into a corner of the family room. Alec had gotten pretty good at that game. The lightsabers had hooked him. He loved the way they hummed and whirred and when they smacked together. That sharp, echoey sound was amazing, and after reading Robin Hood and the Chronicles of Narnia and so many Lloyd Alexander books, Alec was no stranger to sword fights. He had not been surprised one bit when his parents explained that they had named him after Alec Guinness, the actor who played the first Obi-Wan Kenobi, and that his little brother had been named for Luke Skywalker. Interesting. Alec eventually watched all the other Star Wars movies with his family. He liked the movies, but what he loved was his dad's shelf of Star Wars books. More than 40 different picture books, comic books, and novels. During fourth grade, Alec read everything on that shelf, and then he read each of the novels again, and then again. And when his dad got the Star Wars Expanded Universe novels, he read all ten of them twice. But most of the movies he watched only once. Sure, they were loaded with action, and there were explosions, and wild chase scenes, and a lot of sound effects were cool, especially the lightsaber fights. But compared to the novels, the movie seemed pale and thin. And it was the same with the Black Cauldron movie. The book was ten times better. Movies were always so short. The ride home from school was short, too, not even long enough to read half a chapter, especially with Luke muttering and tapping next to him. As they turned into the driveway, his mom pushed the garage door opener. And when the minivan stopped inside the garage, she hit the button that opened both of the back sliding doors. Luke grabbed his things and left. But Alex stayed put and kept reading. He was almost to the part about Templeton the rat and his rotten egg. And he didn't stop until he got to the end of the chapter. He closed the book and discovered he had been sitting alone in the dark garage, reading by the dome light in the back seat of the minivan. He imagined Kent's mocking voice again, bookworm. But then Alec heard his own voice echoing off the garage walls. Well, guess what, pal? I like being a bookworm, and I'm good at it. And then he grinned. It was like Kent had just given him the answer to his problems, because he didn't need to convince some so-called friend to help him start his new club. What he needed was another bookworm. Good thinking. Chapter eight is called Skunk. Go away. Those were her first words before Alec even opened his mouth. The girl didn't look up. Just used one hand to show, to shoo at him like he was a fly. She was with the origami club, but sitting so her back was against the edge of their table, facing away from it, her feet propped up on her book bag, and she was reading. Most of the time, talking to girls made Alec's hands sweat. Finding the courage to walk up to this one had taken his, him almost an hour and a half, and suddenly it seemed pretty clear that this might turn into another smackdown, maybe worse than the one he'd gotten yesterday from Kent and Dave. 
Alec didn't know this girl. He thought he might have seen her in his language arts class, sitting somewhere at the back of the room, but he wasn't sure. Up there in the front row with Mr. Brock giving him the stink eye every two minutes. He was too nervous to look around. He wasn't even sure this girl was in sixth grade. Maybe she was in fifth. She was wearing jeans and a, fa and a fa fa blah, blah, <laughs> faded red t-shirt. And she had and she had folded up a pale blue sweatshirt to use as a cushion between her back and the table. Brown hair down to her shoulders, black and red sneakers, white socks. It was hard to tell much about her face because she still hadn't looked up at him. She was reading a hardcover copy of A Wrinkle in Time, another book on the list of his favorites. Rich gave Alec an idea. I'll leave, he said, but before I do, I'm going to tell you the ending of that book. The girl jumped to her feet so fast that Alec's mouth dropped open. He shook, she shook the book at him, her eyes narrowed to slits. If you even start to say one word, I will... Hey, hey, I'm kidding, Alec said, and he backed away. And he put his hands up like he was under arrest, which was exactly how he felt. She was shaking her book six inches from his nose. And at that moment, Alec got a good look at the girl's eyes. They were brown. The five other kids in the origami club looked at, looked at them, and they seemed worried, especially one smaller girl who really looked, looked like a fourth grader. Really, Alec said, speaking quietly, I would never drop a spoiler on somebody, honest. I, I just want to ask you one thing, and then I'll go away and never talk to you again, if that's what you want, okay? She lowered her book, and Alec lowered his hands. Okay, she said, talk. He motioned for her to step further away from the origami table, then spoke softly. I want to start a new club, and I need one person to sign this application. He held out the paper. She nodded at the table. Nope, I'm doing origami. I joined, some, I joined something the first day to get it over with. Okay, he said slowly. But have you met Mrs. Case? She's all about the rules, and very soon she's going to notice that you're not folding any paper, and she's not going to let you sit there. So if you sign this application, then we could start a new club, and you'll be able to read all you want to, just like that. She wrinkled her nose. Ew, you're starting a book club? I hate book clubs. A bunch of stupid talking, like I said, go away. And she started back to her table. It's not like that, Alex said quickly. I just want a place where I can sit and read. No discussions, only reading. But I didn't want a lot of other kids hanging around. If I could, I'd get a table all for myself. But it takes at least two kids to start a club. So two is all I want. And the deadline for setting up a new club is today, in about a half an hour. She was listening now and thinking, but how are you going to keep more kids from joining? Well, Alec began and then stopped. Have you read a book called Hatchet? Hatchet? Yeah, I've read it at least five times. That answer made hit this girl at least five times more interesting to Alec than she had been just seconds earlier. It also made him smile. How about the third book, Brian's Winter, he asked. She looked at him scornfully, of course. Great, so how does the kid keep beers away from his shelter? Simple, the girl said. He is a pet skunk. Exactly, said Alec, and he grinned at her. She scowled. So, like, I'm the pet skunk? I'm your big plan for keeping beasts away from your precious table? She pointed off to her left. Go. No, no, he said. Look, and he held out the application form. I want to call it the Loser's Club. The name is the skunk. She stared at him, but only for a half a second. Then she smiled and nodded. That's genius. Looks like you made a new friend. Which was a comment that made this girl even more interesting to Alec. Plus, she looked nice, especially when she wasn't shaking a book in his face. She pulled a pen from her back pocket and pointed at the application. My name's Nina, Nina Warner. Where do I sign? Right here at the bottom, and I'm Alec Spencer. She took the application, read it, and stopped smiling. She pointed at a short sentence printed just above the signature lines. Did you see this? She read from the form. 
The members of each club must make a presentation about their activities during the extended day open house on October 20th. She shook her head. I hate that kind of stuff. And with just the two members, I'd have to say something or do something. Oh, that, Alex said. Open house won't be a problem. It's a reading club, right? So I'll just give a book report or something. I've always been really good at a book report. I'll take care of everything. She said, well, okay, if you promise. I promise, he said. So Nina Warner clicked her pen and signed her name exactly 90 minutes before Mrs. Case's deadline. Chapter 9, and I believe we're reading 7, 8, 9. Yes, we are. On Thursday afternoon, as he checked in for his third extended day session, Alec gave Mrs. Case a big smile. She smiled back, but he barely noticed, because today was different. Today, the entire giant gym was different. Today, he had somewhere to go, a place of his own, and all the rules were on his side. But getting everything settled hadn't been automatic. It had taken a week. I'm sorry, it had taken some work. Nina had signed the club application yesterday at 4.30. Alec had given it to Mr. Wilner, and by 5 o'clock, Mr. Wilner had given it to Mrs. Case. Ten minutes after that, Alec was standing in front of the program director at her table by the main door of the gym. Mrs. Case had looked up from the application into Alex's face. The Losers Club? That's not a very nice name for a book club. Alec didn't want to explain his real reason for choosing the name, and he hoped she wouldn't make a big deal about it. So she, so he shrugged and said, I just like the way it sounds, which was true. Mrs. Case frowned a little, thinking, why not call it Extended Day Book Club or the Page Turners or something like that? The Page Turners, that's cute. Alec shrugged again. The Losers Club sounds more interesting to me, which was also true. Then he added, then he asked, is there a rule that says clubs have to have a certain kind of name? Well, no, she said, but I still think it's an odd name. Alex shrugged his shoulders a third time. I still like it. Mrs. Case wasn't happy, but she said, okay, I can't see what harm it'll do. After all, a book club by any other name is still a book club, right? Right, said Alec, but he was pretty sure that his idea for his club was not the same as her idea. Mrs. Case moved on. You saw in the application about the open house on, on in October. This is the first book club we've ever had at Extended Day, and I'd love to see it do well. So I hope you and your group can come up with an interesting presentation. Alex said, we already talked about the open house. It'll be great. Then silently he added, probably, well, maybe. <laughs> Mrs. Case had run out of questions, so she signed the application form. She smiled and said, I don't think I've ever been this excited about a new club. All that had happened yesterday, and it already felt like ancient history. As Alec walked toward the far wall of the gym, he saw that there were now six folding cafeteria tables, and there was Mr. Wilner, hard at work, helping kids get their bins out of the storage closet. The four chess club kids had one small bin, plenty big enough for two folding chess boards and two sets of chess pieces. One medium bin was large enough for all the supplies used by the kids in the origami club. There were two boys and two girls in the robotics club, and they needed two medium-sized bins full of parts and tools and wires, plus another small bin loaded with batteries and power adapters. The six kids in the Lego club had four small bins plus two huge ones, all set for some serious building. There were no bins at all for the Chinese club. The three kids at the table brought their own equipment each each day, iPads and, he and yeah, iPads and headphones and workbooks borrowed from the school library. Alec had a smile when he looked at the six, sixth table, the newest table, his table. No bins, no groups of kids, just a table, and Mr. Wilmer had placed it exactly where Alec had asked him to, right in the corner. The last thing Alec, Alec watched Mr. Wilmer take out the storage closet was a stack of all the club name cards. They weren't fancy, simple sheets of heavy tan papers folded lengthwise. Each little two-sided sign was about three inches high and 12 inches long, and the club names had been written with a thick black marker. 
Mr. Wilner was walking from table to table, placing each sign where it belonged. The placards looked good. Alec had noticed how clear the lettering was on the very first day, and he wondered if Mr. Wilner had taken a class to learn how to write that way. Alec arrived at the table in the corner, just as Miss, Mr. Wilmer did. Hey, Alec, how's it going? Great. Mr. Wilmer held out the new name card for inspection. Looks perfect. Nice lettering, Alec said. Thanks, said Mr. Wilmer. He hesitated a moment. And you're sure I've got it this right? Yep, exactly right, Alec nodded. Excuse me, let me take a sip of my drink. I just love this book. <clears throat> okay, he said, and he put the sign on the table. See you later. Alex slid onto the bench along the back side of the table, so the wall was behind him. It made a good back seat, back rest. Also, if kids got close enough to see the name of the club from this side, he'd be able to watch their faces. It might be fun. Alec was sure that during the entire history of the extended day program, this was the first time there had ever been a group called the Losers Club. He reached into his back pocket and once again took out the High King. But before opening the book, he looked across the gym and noticed that all the active games kids were clumped in the far corner near the climbing wall. They were waiting for Mr. Jensen to pass out kickballs and basketballs. And at the head of the line, Kent, of course. For just a second, Alec thought about standing up on his club table and yelling all the way across the gym, Hey, yo, Kent, check out my new club, and I didn't need any help from you. But he didn't. Alec shoved the, shoved the talk with Dave and Kent completely out of his head. And for the 15th time, he also made himself stop thinking about the talk he'd had with Mrs. Vance. Because... That letter she was sending to his mom and dad, it could be at home right now. Like a little tornado trapped in an envelope, ready to burst out and blow his life. Let me see, probably apart. Let me see. To bits, to blow his life to bits. He knew the storm was coming. And he'd been getting ready for it. But since there was absolutely nothing he could do about it at the moment, Alex, seemed, Alex opened the High King to chapter six and began to read. Instantly, the action pulled him off into a distant world. But he only got to stay there for about 10 minutes. A huge burst of cheering yanked his eyes away from the book. In the far corner of the gym, Kent had just kicked a grand slam. As he rounded third base, his team went wild, all, all in a circle now, chanting, champs, 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 which seemed to be the name of Kent's kickball team. Alec had to smile. Kent hadn't just been bragging yesterday. He truly was great at kickball, and Dave was almost as good. The resentment Alec had felt about being called a bookworm for the 500th time, it melted away, just vanished. Well, almost. He did still feel bad for Dave about the way he'd been caught in the middle of an argument. But Kent had been right. This really was going to be a club for kids who wanted to sit and read, and Dave probably wouldn't have liked it that much. Plus, Kent was entitled to his own likes and dislikes, right? Because everybody was. And even Kent, even though Kent had tried to put him down and tease him, all that had ended up being a huge help. Because today, today he had his own table. He had plenty of room to spread out. He had a fantastic book in front of him. And he had three hours of totally free time. And he had a full bag of Cheetos along with two drink pouches of super sweet Hawaiian punch. Plus that girl, Nina, she was smart and sort of pretty too. And she was headed his way. Trying not to be obvious, Alec watched Nina walk across the gym. When she got close enough to read the new sign at the table, she smiled at him. Okay, we just read three chapters. It was so good. Can't wait to see what happens next. Let's go ahead and take a moment to stretch. Let me move you back here. Take a moment to stretch. Doesn't matter if we're standing or we're sitting. You can stretch either way. If you're sitting, you can just put your arms far back behind you. Oh, that does feel good on my back. Okay. 
Put your hands up in the sky, shake them. Like you just don't care. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next, I'll let you know. The book that I, let's see, I got to read quickly because I read, took a while. Okay. The book that I read to uh, K2, I also want to read to 3.5. It's a great book. Um, it's also by the same author that we've been, we did a book by um, last week, which was the, the Bad Seed. And I just purchased two new books yesterday, and I didn't realize that they were by the same author, Jory John. This book is called Penguin Problems, and you're really going to like it. Um, the words that I picked out I, for vocabulary for, these, for this book was squawking, which is complaining, buoyant. Excuse me. Does anybody know what buoyant means? Buoyant is capable of floating. The next one is waddle <laughs> and literally. Okay, so I'm going to read this book. You're going to enjoy it. I'm sure it has a great, um, it's a great book. You're just going to love it. Okay, here we go. Penguin Problems. It was way too early. My beak is cold. Here's Penguin. What's with all the, excuse me, what's with all the squawking, you guys? It snowed some more last night, and I don't even like the snow. It's too bright out here. Is Penguin having a good day? Is he happy? No. I'm hungry. I'd like a fish. Where are all the fish? So he looks down at the water. Hey, fish, get out here. The ocean smells too salty today. I'm not buoyant enough. I sink like a dumb rock. It's way too dark down here. Brr. I said brr. Oh, great. A leopard seal. Oh, great. A shark. Oh, great. An orca. What is it with this place? So he went down into the water because he's hungry. He went to go find some food, wanted a fish, and instead... He found all the bigger sea life that wants to eat him. I don't like being hunted. I'm still hungry, but my flippers ache. I waddle too much. I look silly when I waddle. See? Waddle, waddle, waddle. I wish I could fly, but I can't. See? Everybody looks the same as me. I look the same as everybody else. Wouldn't that be interesting? Everybody looking exactly the same. So now here he is and he's like, Mom, I literally, literally have no idea who you are. Dad, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. My name is Mortimer. So that's what would happen if we all looked exactly the same. I have so many problems, and nobody even cares. There he is, having his little hissy fit. But there's a walrus there, see him? So walrus says, excuse me, sir. And he taps him. What? And walrus says, good afternoon. I sense that today has been difficult. But look around you, Penguin. Have you noticed the way the mountains are reflected in the ocean? Like a painting? Have you gazed upon the blue of that cloudless winter sky, my friend? Have you felt the sun as it gently warms your back? Have you simply stood with your penguin brothers and sisters and elders who adore you? Yes, some things are challenging out here. Yes, we all have difficult moments from the walruses to the polar bears, from the whales to the penguins. But hear me now, my new friend, I wouldn't trade my life for any other. And I am quite sure you wouldn't either. I am certain that when you think about it, you realize that you are exactly where you need to be. 
Please think about what I've said, Penguin. Goodbye for now. What a wise walrus. And we can, we can look at this and think about the pandemic, what's going on right now. And um, that would be a good way to think about, look at this book because it, it's got a good, um, good meaning. And he says, who the heck was that guy? What a strange has always talked to me. Walruses don't understand penguin problems. And then he sighed, oh, okay, okay. Maybe that walrus has a point. After all, I do love the mountains. And the ocean and the sky. And I have friends and family. This is my only home and this is my only life. Maybe things will work out after all. Okay, so Walrus made him think, and that's off. That's awesome. But that's not the end. The last page, he says, my beak is cold. It gets dark way too early. <laughs> I hope you like this book. I think it was really cute. I really like um, The Wise Walrus. Some of the things he said, um, I'm going to go back to you for a second. He said, yes, some things are challenging out here. Yes, we all have difficult moments. And so do we. Things are different right now. I'm making a video for you because you're working from home. And we wear masks when we go places. So things are a little different and they're challenging, but we're working through them. And we need to think about all the great things in our life. And I know you have plenty. So please take a moment and think about all the things that you're grateful for. I know you can come up with a, a grand list of them like your family, your friends, your health, things like that. All right, I better let you go. I hope you enjoyed the stories today, and I look forward to next next week when we read some more of The Losers Club and another book by Jory John, since we're going to do a Jory John month of books. All right, remember to stretch, eat healthy, have a good attitude, and think about what you're grateful for, because there is so much to be grateful for. And don't forget, keep reading, friends. Have a great day. Bye for now.